You guys, this video is more of a review and a vignette into how I start each painting session. If you'd like more info or a beginner's explanation of the recipe and mixing practices, click the link in the upper corner. Today we're looking at a time-lapse video of my paint prep routine. Usually, because I keep large amounts of mixed up in the bottles, I only have to shake up the paint, but of course, sometimes the bottles run low of a certain color, so I might have to mix up some new paint for that color with my recipe. So you'll see there on the table, I've got some GAC 800 and the large jugs in front of that gold. I've got some flood flow trawl over there on the left. Sometimes I run into a problem getting the lids open because, of course, acrylic, as it dries, sort of turns to a glue, and if it's in the threads of the cap, it'll fuse the cap shut. So they're not always easy to open. I'm just running down the line, opening all of them. That white one is especially problematic, I guess because it's small or maybe because the threads aren't, aren't the same. So I'm using a wrench. I've used a wrench on it a lot, which has also sort of torn up the threads, and therefore it's even harder. Okay, it looks like I've gotten my caps open. Nope. Okay, that is just a jug of straight white paint, jug of straight black paint, not mixed with my pouring mediums. Those are my paint strainers. They're like a funnel-like paper with mesh in the bottom, and I use those. I've made it part of my practice to strain my flood flow trawl. So I'm shaking it up. I have a little side project going there uh, to the left. You might be wondering why I tipped that cup over. I had some GAC 800 and some Flood Flow Trial mixed together in a cup that, that I had saved with some saran wrap on it, and I was just trying to dump it. I guess I'm going to mix it with some black here in a second, but there you see me straining my Flood Flow Trial. And that's the end of the jug, so I'm going to let it drain for a second. I go through the GAC 800 quicker than I do the Flood Flow Trial, unfortunately, and it's more expensive. So I'm shaking up the new bottle of the GAC 800, no, the Flood Flow Trial, and I'm going to put the cap on this and let it drain. I don't know why the camera keeps going out of focus. Maybe because of the glare in the window. So we're letting that strain. The cup I just pulled over to the left is, or to the right, that is my mixing cup. And you can see writing on it. I have marked the ratio at a certain volume for my recipe. So at the bottom, it's two parts flood flow trial, three parts GAC 800, and the, the tallest line is for one part pigment. So I've got a full cup of strained flood flow trial. Trying to get the last little bit to go through the mesh. And I'm thinking about what color I'm going to mix. And I decide on white. The uh, black jug has a black bottle sticking up out of it. I'm draining paint into it. It wasn't actually just straight black paint, but I had taken some home to patch a paint, a painting. And so it had my mixture recipe in it, and so I'm just pouring it back into the larger jug to marry them. Okay, so I have poured my flood flow trial to the first line, now I'm pouring the GAC 800 to the second line. And again, with the bottles that are almost done, I'm going to let them drain. That little orange spoon in my hand is uh, some black pigment that I'm adding to that small amount of mixture that I had set aside from the last mixing session. So I'm adding some black and stirring, stirring, stirring. Stirring, 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 and then I'll put that in the black jug as well. So I'm really digging this neutral color scheme, and I had done a lot of the neutral color scheme with the black and the white and gold, micaceous oxide, silver, and the iridescent pearl, but recently I've started adding in that burnt sienna, and I'm really digging it because it's taking it to a really earthy looking stuff with the brown. I'm really liking the brown as an addition to my neutral color scheme. Setting aside the empty jugs. Oh, there's another empty jug. Let's get the last of that, and we can set that aside, too. There we go. Two empty jugs in the back. So we've got the GAC 800 added, and now for the white pigment. One part. Stir, stir, stir. Stir, stir, stir. Look at me multitasking. Stirring and unscrewing. Screwing the black tighter. Check it on the funnel. Stirring. singing a song. Okay, so this jug, out of all the jugs, as you can see, has the tiniest neck and is hard to pour into, which is why it always has paint in the threads and is hard to open. I do a pretty good job, though. Look at that. Finesse. I definitely go through black and white paint the most. I mix up a lot of black and white. Recently, I've been using silver as a background, though, and that's pretty sweet. I really like it, and so I'm definitely going to have to mix up some silver here. I 
had to go wash out the cup for the next mixture. Now I'll clean the cap and clean the threads as best I can. I should do that every time. I wish I could say I'd do that every time. I would have less of a problem if I kept up with that maintenance each time I poured paint. <clears throat> Maybe next time when I go, it'll come off easier. So I'm pulling the dried paint out of the threads and you always want to mix it to incorporate it with the older mixture that's in the bottle. Mixing the black, incorporating that, and I'm setting the brown there because, all right, that was too blood flow trial. And three parts GAC 800. So I think I'm going to do the burnt sienna mixture. Then I look and I realize I don't have any burnt sienna paint. Going to check in the closet. I have to think about what color I'm going to mix since I don't have any of the brown. And honestly, there's plenty of brown in that jug, so we're fine. I've got plenty of gold. Uh, iridescent pearl, I need some more of that, and I need some more of the silver, because I've been using silver as a background color quite a lot lately, so we'll mix both of those. The problem is, I don't have enough GAC 800 to mix two full mixing cups of both of those pigments, so I'm going to have to split it. So here I'm thinking about, measurement-wise, how I'm going to split it. getting a couple of cups so I can divide the mixture. So I'll pour half into each cup, half of my GAC 800 and flood flow trial mixture into each cup. So I'm going to pour that mixture into both cups, dividing it in half, the GAC 800 and the flow trial mixture, and then I'll add a half portion of pigment to each one. So putting half of it back into the mixing cup, just so I have stirring room. Meanwhile, I'm looking into mixing my micaceous oxide because that one takes some extra attention. The paint flex, the mica settles to the bottom and it just takes some extra scraping and agitation to get it off the bottom. Can't just shake the bottle like I do with my white or my black. Stirring it. Okay, so half of the mixture is back in the mixing cup and then I'm going to think about how I can measure out half the pigment, which is two ounces. So those little cups are one ounce. One, two. So that was the silver. And now I'll stir, stir, stir. Stirring the silver. Opening my silver container to put it in. It's not going to all fit. But that's good, it never hurts to have more, more than enough. Stirring the silver, that was already in there because that settles a bit too. All the iridescents settle and are on the insert side because they have metallic bits in them. So I put the reserve over there in the cup. Is it, is it called reserve when it's extra? Probably not the extra, I put the extra in the cup. Had to go clean the cups for the next mixing session. I try to do as little throwaway as possible. I reuse containers, I reuse mixing tools, I reuse measuring tools, I reuse all of it. And I try those big jugs, I try to get the bigger jugs. The only reason I got that smaller jug of the flood flow trial that's in the middle of the table is because they didn't have the bigger jug. But I feel like the bigger jugs create less waste <coughs> overall. And I can use them for uh, mixing larger. I could use those to put my paint in too, but um, I have enough at the moment, so they will go in the recycling after I rinse them thoroughly. All right, so two ounces of the iridescent pearl into my additive mixture. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Did you guys notice my haircut? I've got a haircut. Got some layers cut in there. My daughter got a haircut and I, my son got a haircut. We all got a haircut, same day. Summertime, gotta lighten it up. All right, so poured the extra in the cup and filled my bottle. I need a bigger bottle for my iridescent pearl. I definitely run out of it way too quickly. I need to upgrade. Wiping off my tools, wiping off the table. Am I done with my mixing? Is that all I'm gonna do today? Looks like it. All right, there you have it. That is my paint prep routine. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe. Click the bell icon in order to get more notifications. And don't forget to check out my paintings and my merch like this shirt on seaholesharart.com. Bye.